Now this card came as a surprise to me, not a week ago when I bought it, but when it was originally released, because I was amazed. This was my first ever proper graphics card from my original PC build, and I mean I'd had cards in the past, but nothing quite like this. This right here is the AMD Radeon HD 7770, a truly legendary card in my eyes and not just from my nostalgia filled memories of using it, but from the fairly powerful packing specs it has for a £20 graphics card. Based on the Cape Verde XT architecture, it's a CGN 1.0 card based on the 28 nanometer node. As a core clock of 1GHz and 1GB of GDDR5 memory clocked in at 1125MHz. It has 640 shader units and uses a measly 80 watts of power. And well you guessed it, it runs on any PC, as proven by the ancient £35 video we did ages ago. So if you're one of the 50 subs that remembers that, then I don't really recommend you check it out because the video is not very well made, but it worked well in that build so we're going to review it properly here. And finally it does support DirectX 12, AMD ReLive and well some other major updates along with the rest of AMD's products. As you may see the card is a bit dusty, and now it would work in that state so it's not exactly major that we clean it, but I think this card deserves to be cleaned up to near new condition. But why should you guys care about this card? Well this card was one of the pretty major releases from what I remember, and virtually everyone was wanting one as soon as I made my PC, as it was a major improvement over the HD 6770, which was really just a rebranded HD 5770. So yeah, this was a big card for budget gamers like you or I. It was also ready for the future with full support for async compute in DirectX 12 albeit basically in games that did use Vulkan or DirectX 12, so you could see a small but needed boost over the competition. In fact the main issue with it was that it was such a good overclocker that AMD's own software at the time didn't do it enough justice. But well we're using the latest Crimson drivers which are full of features including the ability to get a nice overclock, which we did with a solid 1200MHz on core and 1250MHz on memory, which I left running a benchmark for quite a while and well it was stable and there were no crashes so I left it at that. At its stock speeds it was highly comparable to that of a HD 6870 in speed, and well overclocked it really began to shine. Then again it did have an issue of being priced quite high after its launch, however a couple of months down the line and we were seeing this card hit sub £80 prices, and the equivalent happened in the European and US markets respectively, which is when people bought this card most. With the powerful reputation the GCN architecture already had it seemed near impossible for AMD to slip up at this point and the HD 7000 series has been remembered due to its longevity and the host of new features it bought, such as its remarkable power efficiency, I mean these cards could switch themselves off when not in use, essentially offering you a PC that hardly consumed any power when it was in standby, which although seems very basic now was quite a big talking point at the time. It also allowed for complex programs to be ran on it which helped with developers in developing programs and it gave it a whole nother use in a whole nother market. But at the time I bought it I just saw the price, saw the benchmarks and bought it as soon as I could. But how does it perform 5 years after release? Has this king of budget performance fallen? Let's clean it up and find out. Up first we have Grand Theft Auto 5 with the high settings enabled and the textures set to normal, just to stay under that VRAM limit, which of course gave us a nice and smooth 53fps average and hardly stuttered at all during our entire time playing, which can be seen in the 0.1% lows of 40fps, which is hardly any different from the 1% lows of 44fps, so definitely more than playable, and personally I prefer this experience to the Xbox One or PS4 consoles as I much prefer the fluidity of 53fps over 30fps. Fallout 4, a game which is actually more intense than GTA 5, ran really well with an average frame rate of 47 FPS while running with a mixture of medium and low settings, similar to the console variants of the game. Which is something you'll be hearing quite regularly, as you may have guessed this graphics card is quite similar to the graphics card in the Xbox One or PS4 consoles. Still, admirable performance in two modern titles for only £20 so far. As for Minecraft, well people already know how well it will run on the card, so we thought we'd try something a little bit more intensive, 
Running the game with the fancy option selected, 8 chunks being rendered and a 1 to 8 by 1 to 8 texture pack, and some fancy ass shaders to make the game look extra nice. And well it did run nice and it did look good too with an average of 47 FPS when in normal gameplay. Although as normal Minecraft will slow down when loading in the world or a lot of chunks, which can be seen in the 1% and 0.1% lows. Early access wise we have the forest running with medium settings in the 1080p resolution, which looked and ran pretty great for a work in progress title, performance of which is similar to that of games like Rust, so in games like that you can expect similar results. Hitting 60fps seems to be extremely demanding in titles like this, so you may have to drop the resolution and a few settings to hit 60fps. But you guys want to see something more new, more intense, and well we have Prey running with medium settings in the 720p resolution. Our first major drop in resolution, but personally I think this game deserves to look like it does in medium settings with a lower resolution than it does to look like it in low settings with a higher resolution. And well it did run fine with a solid 38fps average for the majority of the time, so not half bad so far. Hitman, which is also a very new title running with low settings in the 1080p resolution, ran pretty good with an FPS around 33fps for the majority of the time, so as long as you don't mind 30fps the game was definitely playable and never dipped too far below this mark, and I will say even the low settings in this game do look very nice. Civ 6, which is also once again very new, ran completely fine with medium settings in the 1080p resolution. With medium settings enabled it was fine and you can always use DirectX 12 which may give you higher FPS, but this game is very CPU bound anyway so by late game it'll always vary on your CPU what FPS you get, but generally this is quite a nice card to use for the game. And finally we have CSGO which ran perfectly in 1080p with low settings enabled for a smooth 156 FPS average, which makes the game way more than playable for £20. Even if you have a 144Hz monitor then this GPU would definitely be up for the challenge of running it, so yep for anything esports related this card is generally perfect. And I haven't even got round to mentioning this yet, all these recordings that you're seeing from this card, well they're from the card, I mean there's nothing else going on here but AMD's VC support, which meant we can record 1080p 60fps content with a meager 2% CPU hit. That's right, even on a Pentium D or maybe even a Pentium 4, you could get away with recording some pretty decent gameplay clips with no performance hitting game. So yeah, that's a pretty amazing feature for a £20 card. So yep, I'm saying it now, the best budget card of 2017 right now is the HD7770, purely because it will run on most if not all OEM power supply units, has a host of useful and clever features such as the aforementioned AMD VC encoder, and finally the performance. For only £20, could you ask for any more? Well, yes you can, because these things are going very, very cheap. I mean, they're pretty much guaranteed to be around the £20 mark, unlike all the other GCN cards right now which are super inflated. So there we go, if you're in a pinch and want to do some 1080p 60fps gaming in 2017, look no further than the HD7770. And well if you can't find one, the GTX 465 which I reviewed a while back is also a very worthy alternative. So thank you very much for watching, Good night. So as the guys over on the discord know, the big video is very much in the works and is around a week to two weeks away, so don't forget you can like subscribe for more content like this while you wait, and you can always hop on the discord which will be in the description below if you want to come over and talk to us over on the discord.